hello and welcome to another booktube video from me Lauren from Lauren and the Books. I hope you're doing very well. I feel like I'm doing very well because I'm in the world's cosiest cardigan. This cardigan with cats on it. Uh, welcome to a tag video. Tag videos used to be num 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 num. I used to eat them up all the time on booktube. I'm talking about like years ago when I first started doing this but it rarely happens that I do the old tag videos these days but this is one that I did last year and it's sort of like a check-in video because we're in March now, we're entering the end of March um, and uh, that means we're sort of like a quarter of the way through the year. Um, so it's a nice time to do a little check in with what your reading looks like and maybe some of your reading goals and things like that. And this is called the quarter year crisis book tag. I did it last year, here I am doing it again. It is eight questions um, and should we just crack on with it? So this is, uh, the first question is, how many books have you read so far this year? Um, now, as I was writing down the questions for this, I was watching my last year's video. I, I filmed last year's video in April, so it's a little bit further on, but I'd read significantly more books this time last year. Mm, no, April last year. Um, and this year I've read 28 books, uh, which is still a good number. I mean, I don't set a number, a reading goal now of like how many books I want to read in a year, but 28 books. That means if I carry on at the speed I'm going at, I will have read over 100 books by the end of the year. But we see what happens. Uh, question number two is, have you already found a book you think might be your favourite? If not, what was your favourite book you read that wasn't quite a five star? Now, another thing I noticed when I was watching last year's video is that this year's reading is nowhere near as good as last year's reading. So by this time last year, I'd already read uh, Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow and absolutely loved that. That ended up being one of my favourite books of last year. This year, I've read no five stars and anything that I've read um, that's been a 4.5 star has been a reread. So I've read nothing new to me that qualifies as like one of my favourite books of the year because they've been mentioned in my best books of the year previous year. So I've read, I've reread The Paying Guests, Small Things Like These, Babel. All of these things have been like 4.5 stars, but all of them are rereads. So yeah, this year's reading has not been, I'd also read, um, last year I'd read our Wives Under the Sea, which I loved as well, but yeah, so far, nothing sticking out of me. And when that question came up, I was like, no, nope, I can't think of anything I've read and absolutely loved that stayed with me. So let's hope that the rest of the year's gonna go. Last year was a particularly good reading year, like, and it was stacked at the beginning of the year. But yeah, hopefully there's more to come. <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, question number five, uh, three is any one star books or a least favourite book of the year? So yeah, another thing about the reading is that I've noticed that there haven't been like books that I've hated, hated. Everything's just been like, meh, that's fine. And that might have something to do with the fact that like I very rarely finish a book that I'm really not enjoying unless I'm reading it for a book club. And my least favourite book that I've read this year, which will not come as a surprise to you, is a book called Tackle by Jilly Cooper. Um, and I read this for my choir book club. Uh, it was the second book we read and I thought it'd be quite fun. I've never read a Jilly Cooper book before. Um, and I thought, oh yeah, let's give it a go. And like lots of people in that book club read a different variety of genres. And I thought, well, let's read something that's like a sort of classic author of, uh, classic author, maybe not classic, but like an author who's released a lot of works. And I thought it'd be a lot of fun. It was not a lot of fun. I, it was the worst book I think I've ever read in my life. Um, I found it misogynistic. I found it lacking in plot character development pages and pages and pages of characters at the front of this story like but none of them you get to know any of them everyone is a terrible caricature and yeah it just was not for me so I had a really bad time reading it I read a little bit of it but I listened to the audiobook of the majority of it and it was just absolutely awful um and then following me saying I didn't like it I got some really horrible comments on Instagram resulting in some blockings um so yeah so not everybody hates it there's some people out there who feel very strongly about how much they love about it so yes do um do read it if that's the sort of thing you're into uh number four was what's the genre you have read so far and as always it's literary fiction that's always the the genre that i've read most of so far i mean let me just count how many i've read i've read quite a lot of translated books as well definitely more than i would normally read um and a lot of irish fiction also not so bad with the non-fiction so let's have a look. Here we go, um, literary fiction. Tackle being number one. No, joking. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, 
Seven, yeah, so seven liter uh, literary fictions, which is becoming more of a sort of broader genre, isn't it? Then one, two, three. Oh, three translators. I thought there was more than that. So I guess one, two. So non fiction as well, we've read one. This must be fun for you all. <laughs> two, three, four. Five. Yeah, so I'm gonna say I'm gonna say literary fiction. I've also read quite a lot of Irish fiction at this early stage in the year when I've only read twenty-eight books only. When I've read twenty-eight books, a lot of stuff counts for so like I've read by Irish authors because it's been the Irish readathon. I've read one Two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven Irish books as well. And I've, I'm about to finish one as well. So yeah, so Irish fiction, uh, literary fiction are my most read genres, which isn't a shocker for them all. Uh, next one is a book a, about a, a book that support, a surprised you though. So question number five is a book that surprised you. And I picked two books that I actually ended up enjoying more than I thought I would. They have still marked at a 3.5. So uh, for, in, for me, a rating of one is I didn't like it. A rating of two is it was okay. A rating of three is I liked it. A rating of four is I loved it. And a rating of five is wow wow we were so a rating of 3.5 is a is a good rating it's between a sort of um i liked it and i loved it i liked it and maybe i could love it if i've given it a bit more time or maybe if i'd have had a discussion around it or something at that time so there is things that could push it to a love it but two of those books that i thought i was going to like and i've ended up quite enjoying more than like it is madame by phoebe Wynn, um and you don't know what war is by yeva skalietska so madame by phoebe Wynn is a i guess we could call it a dark academia book it's set in a school it's a bit like um handmaid's tale meets secret history um and it's set in a school uh, where there's a new classics teacher and um, so it draws on quite a lot of sort of um the uh, mythology and stuff like that and particularly women in mythology and it's an all girls um school uh, residential school and this new teacher is sort of getting to know the, her pupils and teaching them about uh, these women and from from mythology and then you're finding out a little bit more about the school and the school isn't quite what it seems um but yeah i i enjoy i, I read that really quickly and then the next one was you don't know what war is by yeva skalietska which is a book I bought last year um, for the Irish Readathon. Didn't get around to reading it and, and read it this year. But Yeva is a young girl who is Ukrainian. She now lives in Ireland um, and um, evacuated Ireland. Uh, evacuated. Um, I guess is the word evacuate. Yeah, I mean that's what she had to do. Uh, Ukraine at the start of the the, the war, um, and it chronicles her journey with her grandmother um, through Ukraine, out of Ukraine, and then trying to find <coughs> somewhere to 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 now live uh, with the help of a Channel 4 news team. And it's all told from her perspective and draws on her journal entries and has um, excerpts of uh, text messages between her and her classmates and photos she's taken and photos that have been taken of where she used to live. And yeah, it was amazing. Like amazing that she's able to, 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 to get this all down in the first place and amazing that she's able to relive that. Um, it really reminded me, not surprisingly, but also surprisingly because it's still happening, of uh, When Hitler Stole Pink Rabbit by Judith Kerr, um, young girl um, fleeing her country. But yeah, it just, it really, I, I think it will stay with me for a really, really long time. I felt quite emotional reading it, like, because I think in light of what's happening at the moment as well, but just like that these things are still happening and the strength of being able to, to put that to paper. And then I give it a 3.5 stars. <laughs> because like that is an amazing feat not to be <laughs> the, the fact that i gave it 2.5 stars feels disgusting now but yeah so those are two books that surprised me because i ended up enjoying them more than i thought i would however still not still no five stars <laughs> sorry ever uh number six is what's a book that came out in 2023 that you want to read but haven't yet so i am all aboard the uh, women's prize for fiction um long list train 16 books i hadn't read any of them um and i've now read one and i'm about 100 pages away from reading my second um, i've got three out from the library at the moment um that i can oh no and i've started an audiobook of another as well so uh, yeah it, it's happening it's in progress um but yeah i've got these three out from the, the uh, library all of these came out in 2023 so all of these are going to be ones that i read soon so brotherless night by vv ganeshanathan 
this one I think I might go to next because Philippa, uh, my uh, co-host on All About the Archers and host of the brilliant uh, podcast uh, Quick Book Reviews, um, read this and loved it. So I think I might go to that one next. Also, these are both due back at the library by the 5th of April and there's reservations on them so I won't be able to renew them. So I think I'll go for that one next. Then also due back is Eight Lives of a Century Old Trickster by Marina Lee. Uh, that's due back in, on the 5th as well. And then Anne M. Wright's The Wren, The Wren, which has got a slightly longer date. I think it's due back on the 12th. So yeah, I think I'll go to Brotherless Night next, then Eight Lives of a Century Old Trickster, and then The Wren, The Wren. And I've still got some to pick up from my other library as well. So it's all, they're, they're slowly trickling in. They're slowly trickling. But yeah, there's some 2023 books that I want to read. Um, number seven is one goal you made that you were succeeding in. And then question eight is one goal you made that you need to focus on. Well, let's have a look at what my, my reading goals were. And then we can have a chat. This is what I did last year as well. So my reading goals, there's 10. Number one was no target completed. I haven't set a target. Number th two was use the library for money saving. That's definitely happened. Um, one of my libraries, I feel like I'm like a little parrot when I say this because I feel like I repeat it all the time. One of my libraries, you have to pay a pound for a reservation, which I really don't mind doing. And the other one, you don't have to pay. The one where you have to pay is a much broader range um, and is closer to me. Uh, but I always try the one that you don't have to pay first just because of the money saving aspect of things. So, um, yeah, I've spent £26 so far this year on reservations. However, um, that whilst that is saving money, because if I were buying those books, then great, but I'm taking two of due back at the library tomorrow that I haven't even had a chance to look at. So I think next year, one of my goals will be pace your reservations so you actually get the chance to read them. Uh, number three is say bye bye to Audible, um, and this is again for money saving and to use Libby and Borrow Box more. Um, I did say, I, I put my Audible on pause. This this is one that needs more focus because I put my Audible on pause and hadn't used it for three months. And the plan was if I hadn't used it in three months, I would then just cancel it. Um, however, when the Women's Prize for Fiction long list came out and I didn't own any of them and couldn't get started on any of them, I went snivelling back to Audible because that was the way of getting the book instantly um, rather than wait for it on Libby or Borrow Box and turn out Libby and Borrow Box didn't have any of the audiobooks um, for of the, the Women's Prize. So yeah, so I went back there. So I have reignited my Audible subscription um, to listen to um, River East, River West, and currently I'm listening to um, Western Lane. So yeah, so it'll go back on, I'll, I'll reignite, it goes back on pause for three months, and then if I don't use it, it can be um, cancelled. Number five was to read some series. So um, <laughs> the all three series, I haven't started any of them. We've still got nine months of the year left, guys. So the Barchester Towers series, have not started that. The Mirror Visitor series, have not started that. The Daughter of the Forest series, have not started that. Um, then I've got a reading challenge to do. Um, my friend Jen, Jen Campbell, uh, made me a reading challenge for my birthday, um, which was a box of 10 little prompts with little gifts in. And I've been doing those on my Friday reading vlogs. That's where it's all kicking off over there, guys. You need to go and check out over there. Um, and I think I've done three of those. Yeah, I've got some badges, um, a necklace, and a um, uh, placemat, with, uh, not a placemat, poster with a British blue on it, which is what my cat Daphne is. So yeah, so that's going well. And then I've got my last year's uh, reading challenges to finish as well, because I didn't finish all of those. Uh, number seven is uh, Carry On With My Book Club. So I've got my choir book, book club. We're about to meet for the third time um, next week, and we are discussing... Um, Promise Boys by Nick Brooks and then the book that we're reading after that is Bridget Jones's Diary because um, I'm trying to get a real mix of like um, what books people get, can get from the library or second hand and stuff and I thought Bridget Jones's Diary like because the issues have been is that not everyone's been able to get the book in time or it's been it's been hard to get because I picked newer books so I thought I'd pick an older book and we're also going to watch the film as well and um, and uh, compare it so yeah and Patreon Book Club still going strong we're reading Carla this month by Colin Walsh that is one that I'm reading at the moment that I'm very much enjoying. And I think maybe when I started it, I thought it was going to be a five star. -er. Um, it may have dropped a little bit. Not in, like this, I still I still am very, very much enjoying it. Um, but yeah, I feel like that maybe will be my highest score in new book I've read this year by Colin Walsh. But yeah, that's what we're reading for Patreon Book Club and we're discussing on Sunday. That would have happened by the time we're watching, you're watching this, guys. Irish Readathon, I wanted to take part in that. Tick done that. Nine is reading books from my actual shelves. There's been a little bit less of that going on because of all the books I've been getting out from the library. I've, I've sort of employed the first line challenge again, where I've worked through my red books and read a book from, um, so that was Bella Donna and I read that and I've worked through my orange books. I'm, I read out the first line of every book. I'll link those videos down below if you'd like to go and check and then pick one off of my shelf. So I am making efforts at it. And even if I get through it the whole year and I've just read one book from each cover, then I've, I've read some books off my shelves, but 
yeah it's just been a bit library book heavy um and then, then the last one is daphne de mori may in um in may which i still plan to do so yeah i like to do a little reading challenge every year where i treat myself to um a month of reading a particular author or uh, retellings of a particular book i've done in the past june austin june air um little women um augusta christie june pride and prejudice dis as well i did so this year i'm going to do daphne de morimay i need to that's going to creep around before i know it so i need to have a look at retellings of any daphne de morier books or um books about daphne de morier or, or or inspired by her and also to reread and to read some more daphne de morier um so yeah so i'd like to use that as an opportunity to do that and then one thing that didn't appear on my goals but something that i've done is that i, I really would like to read all of the women's prize long list by the time the winner comes out so the short list is announced on the 24th of april which isn't that it's like less than a month away and then the winner's announced on the third of the, the 13th of june so i worked out when the when the long list was announced because there's 16 books i worked out that i would need to read a book every six days in order to get all of them read by the time the winner was announced however this might get jigged around a little bit when the shortlist gets announced because i tend to sort of forget about books that have been on the long list when the shortlist comes out so but I'm still behind on that. So the plan was is that I needed to have a book read by the 11th of March, then another one read by the 17th of March. And today, when I'm filming this, is the 23rd of March. Oh, so I've got a third one. No, it's not the 23rd of March. It's the 21st of March, sorry. And I've only read one. So I'm one behind. And my next one's due by Saturday the 23rd. And will I have had one read? I might have finished um, Night Bloom by then. But yeah, so I'm falling behind on that, so I need to keep up to date with that. Well, there we go. That is the quarter year crisis book tag. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, let me know your answers in the questions, um, like, or if you've answered this on your channel, um, then do do link me down below or let me know. I've written all the questions in the blurb down below so you can answer, and I'll see you all again soon for another booktube video. Goodbye!